Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using ASP.NET Core 3 and Angular 10. In the last video tutorial, we were working on the account service. We implemented the login method and we also created the get user profile method, which we use within the login method when the user is logged in. I showed you how to manage state using the observable store. The library that we installed was observable store and I have installed this library in the last video tutorial. I showed you how to initialize and set the state of your objects using this observable store. If you haven't watched the last video tutorial, I recommend you to watch it. Now we have initialized our state. We have created the method. Now we need to log in our users. So we will implement the login or consume the login method from the account service in this login component. In the login component, first thing that I am going to do is check the state of the uh, user, whether the user is logged in or whether the user is not logged in. So we have an interface which contains all the stored states. And here currently we have only one value stored in the stored state, which is the logged in status. So we would need to get the value from our store state for login status. And to do that in the login component, we will use the account service. So using the account service, we have a method called as global state changed. This method is part of the observable store and we will have access to this method once we extend our account service with the observable store. So Using the global state changed, we will subscribe to this object. And once we have subscribed to this object, we will get a result which will contain the state of the properties in our application. Now, currently, we want to access the state for the logged in uh, for the logged in status because that's the only one property that I have added over here in the store state. And once I get that property, I want to assign it to this login status observable, which is of type behavior subject. So to assign the value to this login status or uh, behavior subject, I'm going to use the next method, which is a part of behavior subject. When we want to assign value to behavior subject, we use the next method and then we want to pass in the value that we want to assign. So our value comes from the state. So state dot login status is the value that we want to be assigning to this logged in status or behavior subject. So that's how we will access the state in our application values of our stored objects using the global state changed uh, property or global state changed uh, property will subscribe to it and then we will get the result. So now we have the result stored in this login status. Also for the uh, logged in status, next thing that I want to do is go ahead and add a if condition over here. So let me go ahead and add an if condition. Uh, if the user is already logged in, I want to uh, route the user or redirect the user back to the home page. I don't want them to see the login page or the login form because they are already logged in. Unless they are uh, not logged in, we would not want to show him the show them the login form. So as we know that the behavior subject will now have the value of the logged in status. So we will use the uh, login status behavior subject object and call the get value method. By calling this method, we will get the value of this particular object. And now if the value is true, which means that the user is logged in. And if the value is false, that means the user is not logged in. So uh, if the user is logged in using our router object, we will navigate to the login page. So we will call the navigate method and when inside this navigate method, we are going to pass in the uh, path 
which is just a forward slash which means we will redirect to the home page if we look at the uh, app routing module in our application here when we don't define a path name we will redirect the user to the home component automatically so now we have this uh, initialize then set up in the login component next thing that we want to do is initialize these uh, objects that we have created here for our form control and then our form group so let's go ahead and do that so here i've initialized the form controls we have only three form controls on the form the username the password and the remember me uh, checkbox then we have initialized the form group using the form builder so we have initialized the values of the properties and finally we have set the return url in case if we have a url in the query params that the user was initially trying to access before they logged in so we will save that uh, snapshot we will get that url from the snapshot and if there is no return url so we will return the user back to the home page so uh, that's all we do in the ng on it method to initialize the login component next thing that we want to do when the form is submitted we want to call this login method that we have created which will communicate with our backend api so let's go ahead and implement that method but before implementing that method let's go ahead and add some attributes here on the html form that we have created so here in the login form first of all in the form tag we are going to specify the form group which is insert form in our case we have named our form group object as insert form then in the form we will uh, specify the method that needs to be called when the form is submitted so using the ng submit event we have uh, specified the method to call we will implement this method soon here in the errors div i have added the errors that need to be displayed when the reactive form uh, finds any errors so in our login component.ts we have only uh, one validator that is attached to our properties or form control which is required we have not added any other validations that we did for the registration uh, form so if you go to the registration component uh, we have uh, uh, some validators that we have used over here as you can see like minimum length max length so i have not used that over here if you want to implement that you can do that over here as well but i don't think it's required but depends on your requirement and your application requirement so any errors with this specific validators will be shown over here in this div and uh, that should be it for the html now let's go ahead and create this on submit method so we can save this go and create the on submit method you're going to add this method just after our ng on it so this method is going to be calling the uh, login method in our account service so let's go ahead and implement the logic over here so here i have implemented the logic for the on submit method when this method is called or when the form is submitted this method will be called first thing that we do we get the values of our form controls and assign them to this object called as user login then we call the login method from our account service using the account service object that we have instantiated in the constructor when we call the login method we have to specify the username the password and the remember me flag option in the parameter of this method as you can see over here so we get this values from our user login object which contains the form control values then we will subscribe to the result that is returned from this method as we know this method is going to return a result or going to return an error if we receive a result then we are going to set the invalid login uh, attribute to false that we had initially set to true or we have initially uh, added over here we have not set any value over here but yes if the user has been uh, logged in so we will set this to false next thing we have to remove the background image from the uh, body of the uh, document so we use jquery to set the background image so i'm going to remove it from 
uh, uh, the background using this jQuery code that I have added over here. Next thing I am going to do is navigate the user to the return URL. So this return URL object we had already added it in the ngOnit method. Now if there is an error, if the when we subscribe to the login methods response we receive an error, the invalid login will be set to true. The error message we will assign the error message the value of the error that we receive. Now if the error dot status is 500 so we are going to return a status code on every error of the login method so if we go back to our account controller the api for the auth method so i'm going to minimize this register and here you will see we have a status code that is being returned http status code unauthorized http status code internal server error http status code bad request each of this uh, status codes has a number or an uh, code association associated with it as you can see for internal server we have 500 for author unauthorized we have 401 for bad request we have 400 so in the uh, response i am checking if the status is equal to 401 which means it is unauthorized in that case i am checking if the error is of type uh, is login error because in our response we have this property created called as login error and if it is a login error then we have a message attached to that property here in this particular response we are checking if the login error message is equal to auth code required which means that the users two factor authentication is on and they need to provide an authentication code before we proceed further in the login process here i have implemented some logic for the two factor authentication when auth code is required here i will explain this part of the code in detail when we implement the two factor authentication but the code is pretty straightforward what i do in case if the auth code is required so i'll be explaining it when i am doing or working the working on the two factor authentication so i don't want to spend time explaining it to you now so I'll minimize this. The next if block is if the account is locked. So we will send a message account locked. So we will display a sweet alert pop up and we will show the following message. I have imported sweet alert uh, uh, in this particular component. So you would have to add the import statement. Next thing, if uh, if none of these uh, login error messages are returned for a 401 response then we will show a generic toast message on the top right and we will display the message that we received the actual message that we received because we don't know at this point what it could be now uh, if the uh, error status is not 401 it's not 500 it's not 401 then we have used the toast uh, to show a notification here guys i have only added 500 and 401 if you want if you have created custom status codes or if you have implemented multiple state used multiple status code or returned multiple status code then you can expand this if block adding multiple if condition and showing different types of uh, notification to the user i am just checking for 500 and 401 in case where both of these uh, statuses do not match then we will show a generic error message to the user so depending on your implementation you can accordingly implement the if conditions so that should be it for the on submit method as we know if the user is logged in we will navigate the user to the return url and the return url we know if we don't have a return url the user will be navigated to the home page so guys that's all we need in this uh, login component dot ts so now it's time for us to go ahead and do a quick test by logging in to the account of a user let's see if everything works and we don't have any errors on our dom so before we go ahead and test the login form few things that we need to add uh, i forgot to add the error message when email is not confirmed so i have added an additional if condition for the error status 401 if we go back to the backend code and we look at the 
auth service uh, auth service also validates if the email is not confirmed and the message that we have attached is email not confirmed so i have added a validation check for the response uh, which is email not confirmed and when email is not confirmed then we will show a pop up to the user and if any one of these conditions do not match the uh, requirement then we load a generic error in the toast service for the toast service to load in the app module we would need to import the browser animation module so you would have to add this to your imports array and you have to import browser animation module from angular platform browser animations also in the angular.json file you would need to add the reference to toast styling which is toast css uh, style sheet so you will add it after your bootstrap file is loaded so that should be it for the toast now let's go ahead and test our login functionality to do that we will restart our application since we had installed a new package called the store observable store so we will restart our application i have restarted the application here we are going to log in with the user that we had created when we worked on the registration component here i have intentionally uh, added a invalid password here i'm on the network tab if i go to the application tab i should not see anything in the cookies other than the xsrf token and asp netcore anti forgery token now i will go ahead back to the network tab here i will go to the xhr tab so i can see what api calls are being made then i will go ahead and hit login here since my password is invalid i received a invalid username password notification from toast that we can see here the auth call failed if we go and look at the auth we have received the error message which is invalid username password that's the message that was displayed on the toast service if we look at our uh, else statement over here since none of these conditions matched therefore the toast message was loaded with the error message now we will try to log in with a valid password and here if you look at the cookie uh, tab we don't have any cookies right now so if i go back to the network tab here we'll enter the correct password which is test at one two three we'll go ahead and hit login now we have received uh, a response now once we have received a response we will go ahead and get the user's profile so hit next now if we go to the application tab we should see all the received cookies that are set by our cookie service in the browser cookie that's the user role login status is changed to one user id which is encrypted username which is tech234 we have a refresh token and we also have an access token which is encrypted if you go to the network tab the auth call was successful and this is the response of the auth call which was made to the api version 1 account auth method our response status code is 200 which means the user was logged in successfully in the response we have received the following json string which contains the values as we saw and through javascript we can access these values if you don't want to use cookie and want to use local storage so you can use these values with your local storage as well but in this application i have used cookies so i have these options over here available to me which i can also access via javascript so totally uh, up to you if you want to use it but for this particular project we have used cookies to store the values now the next thing that you can see over here is the or the, the call made to the user profile endpoint because after we have successfully logged in we make a call to the user profile as you can see and we have attached the username to the route when we make the user call we receive a response and in the response i have received the following details about the user's profile which i have to add to the profile of the user 
when we create the profile component or work on the profile component. Also, when we switch tabs, we are not making any calls once again because we have stored these values in our observable object for the user's profile. So this is uh, the share replay that is working in the background and is caching these values for us. So now we have successfully logged in. We have successfully implemented login in our application. Users uh, profile cookies have been created and encrypted. Now we have to use uh, these uh, values to maintain the uh, user's state. So for example, here as you see in the navigation bar, user has logged in, but we still see the register and login button. We should be hiding this accordingly based on the user state. We already have implemented uh, observable store which manages the user state. In the next video tutorial, I will show you how to hide or show these component elements based on the logged in status of the user. Also, if we go to the console tab and if we try to check the status, if you go to the uh, account service, here we can always print the user status. So as I mentioned to you when we created the account service, if I set these values to true, you will see what's going on in the stored state and it will be printed in the console. So if I go to the login form, I cannot see the login form because the user is already logged in and here you can see that the logged in status is true because we the user is already logged in we have already logged in so our observable store manages the state here initially this state was set to false so if i go to application and delete all these cookies and if i go to console now and refresh go back to login here you can see that the login status is false and i can see the login form so observable store is managing the user's logged in status. So uh, it's a very nice library as I told you to manage state and we have implemented it in our particular project. So if you have any questions, use the comment section. I will answer those questions. If you are looking for the source code, the source code is available in the DevOps repo. The link will be provided in the video description. Please do not forget to like and subscribe our channel Tech Howdy since we spend hours to write this many lines of code and all we ask from you is to subscribe to our channel tech howdy and once again thank you for watching this video tutorial and don't forget to subscribe our channel